Danger Dolan. From onions wearing pointy boots to bowling enthusiasts, we count 15 of the most useless video game characters of all time. Number 15. Peko, Breath of Fire 3. Peko serves no tangible service to the plot, except for one part right near the end, but apart from that he's basically just an onion with pointy shoes that does about as much as an actual onion would. When he enters your party he's also incredibly underleveled, making you go out of your way to level him up to be anywhere decent. Yeah, near the end of the game he can actually do and take quite a bit of damage, but it's honestly not worth the bother with other more interesting characters in the roster. Number 14. Ashley, Resident Evil 4. Ashley's sole purpose is to make you search out dumpsters wherever you go, for the rest of your life. No one likes escort missions, except for those odd crazy people, and I can't fathom why any developer would think otherwise. Maybe those long hours staring at nothing but coding sent them loopy. At the very least, the developers gave you the option to get her to hide in dumpsters, although that really begs the question as to why she's even in the game. Her main purpose seems to make you constantly backtrack to the dumpster you left her in, for absolutely no reason. Number 13. Negative Man, Mother 3. I mean, yeah, he's supposed to be useless, that's the joke of course, but that doesn't mean he hasn't earned his place on this list. Negative Man is a boss that you fight reasonably early in the game, and by boss I mean there's only one of him, and by fight I mean beat senseless with almost no resistance. If he does decide to stop whining about how life's unfair, he'll attack you for a whopping one hit point of damage. So you better bring lots of food to restore your health. He's definitely a toughie. Number 12. Paichu, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Generally in Smash Bros, you're going to want a fast character, but having a fast speed does not make up for flying off the screen at the slightest cough from just about any other character. To make matters worse, Paichu can also damage itself from its own lightning attacks, which makes about as much sense as a fish drowning because it's in too much water. It's not the absolute worst character in the roster, but it definitely feels that way and you really have no reason not to play its superior version, Pikachu. Number 11. Roman, Grand Theft Auto 4. Everyone who plays GTA 4 remembers Roman. It's hard not to with him calling you about bowling or him telling you how much he loves big fake boobs on American women. Equal parts useless as he is annoying, but really all those phone calls asking about bowling could be forgiven if his place in the story equated to something more than just being a fat Russian man-child that gets kidnapped. Number 10. Roll, Marvel vs. Capcom series. Roll is so noteworthy that she's put in a special character on tier lists, Roll Tier. But of course this isn't a positive thing, but instead a monument to just how useless she is. It doesn't help the fact that in Mega Man her purpose is to do household chores. So why on earth was she included in a fighting game? I have no clue. It seems that Dr. Light just got bored with his rumba and turned it into a child robot because why not I guess? Number 9. Kyrie, Kingdom Hearts. Kyrie doesn't really do anything in Kingdom Hearts 1. All she does is give Sora a reason to go on a journey through a bunch of Disney universes. Except she doesn't even do that properly. In fact, Sora's main motivation is actually to find his rival, Raikou. So much so that when he finally does find Kairi, he does all but ignore her. But at least in the later game she has some sort of use in the narrative as being someone who is so pure that the darkness really doesn't want her to be around anymore. Number 8. Van, Final Fantasy XII. Van is supposed to be the main character of this game, but really he doesn't actually do anything in the plot. Not only that, but he's also not really worth keeping in your party of three. But at least he's a well thought out character with such great motivations as I want to be a sky pirate, and I really, really want to be a sky pirate. Basically, his entire purpose in the game is to be a foil and a crutch for the writer to insert a bunch of exposition that the player really doesn't need. Number 7. Waluigi and anything he's in. Waluigi was created in order to give Wario a partner in Mario Tennis, and for reasons beyond my understanding, he's stuck around ever since. But I guess being a tall, skinny version of Wario is enough that even he has a fan following on the internet. But really, anyone that likes him has about as much personality as a paper plate. But seriously, I love him and I'm just following the script. It's not like Mario has a shortage of enemies in the game, but I guess they really wanted Wario to have a partner, just like every other character in the Mario universe. Number 6. Villagers, Minecraft. When I first heard that Mojang was implementing a trading system in Minecraft, I was pretty excited about it. It sounded like the perfect way to turn all those items you have no use for into something other than chest fillers. But instead they require emeralds, 
an item that should drop from enemies but instead is rarely found underground or by trading with the villagers themselves. Ultimately, the only real contribution their addition made was the generated villages that they live in, which admittedly are nice places to start for your first base, but that's about it. Number five. Mission Veo, Knights of the Old Republic. Mission is a sneaky 14 year old Twi'lek girl that uses pistols. Ah, oh, and she also has a Wookiee best friend. And she's about as useful as you'd imagine a 14 year old girl with pistols might be, but at least she can pick locks, which might be of some use if you couldn't just break them open with your lightsaber. I guess the game had to have a smuggler slash Han Solo type character, but she doesn't really fill that role very well either. Number four, Princess Peach, Super Mario Brothers. Newer games and spin-offs notwithstanding, Peach's only use is being the arbitrary reason that Mario goes on his ventures throughout the Mushroom Kingdom. Not only that, but she gets kidnapped so often that I'm surprised Mario has any reaction other than, Oh boy, here we go again. But at the very least, she serves as a playable character in the spin-offs and the new Super Mario Bros. series. However, that doesn't detract from all the years of servitude she put Mario through. Number three, Slippy from Star Fox 64. Slippy has an ear grating mouth that flaps about constantly. Worst of all, his character has just about no redeeming qualities other than, Hey look, it's a talking frog! If that weren't enough, Slippy also flies into your line of fire way too many times for it to be an accident by the developers, who it seems wants him to die just as much as the player does. In addition to the above, he also requires you to save him 30,000 times a mission, so do yourself a favour and don't bother with him. He should go back to flight school and probably have his voice box removed. Number 2. Magic Carp Pokemon Magic Carp was put into the game because it follows some eastern legend about a lowly carp turning into a dragon, and to Magic Carp's credit, its evolution is pretty cool. However, that doesn't mean that the leveling process isn't a long and arduous affair that requires constantly swapping out or relying on a sometimes rare consumable item. The worst offence of all is when you find a rare shiny version of it, which is a very rare occurrence that is utterly wasted on Magic Carp since you're guaranteed to find a shiny Gyarados in silver and gold versions anyway. Number 1. Samus, Metroid Other M Other M is an all-around bad game that lacks anything that makes other Metroids good, and no small part of that is due to how annoying and useless Samus is. Unlike in other games, Samus in Other M has serious daddy issues, and won't do anything that her once commanding officer authorises her to do, even if that involves burning to death in a volcano. Even if you ignore the horrible story, she controls awfully thanks to the moving around using the D-pad, even though she's in a 3D environment, even though there's a perfectly good nunchuck attachment. She also needs to stand perfectly still when firing missiles, which pretty much ruins their usefulness for anything other than opening doors. Danger Doll, and this video was narrated by Tim from Mario Mayhem. They cover some gaming related countdowns and they play some bootleg games and all kinds of gaming nonsense. Go check them out and give them a subscribe. That's it for this countdown. And have a go!